word of God is preached, there's a warfare that's going on. Because when we preach the word of God, we release the principles of truth and deliverance. And, and right away it comes up against everything that's established in our flesh. We're preaching the word of God that says by his friends we are healed, amen. And yes, there are many people in the congregation, not just here but everywhere, who are suffering many ailments and not being delivered. So there's a warfare going on. Serious warfare. And if the, if the conduit by which God is, is, is using at that point in time to express and to deliver and to reveal his will and his purpose, if that conduit is not conducive to what God is saying, it, it is not in agreement with what God is saying, there will be no return at that point in time to bring the glory and honor on the God. So there must be a focus. There must be a focus. I believe that every time people come together, every time the church is gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe there must be there must be serious focus. Amen. There must be serious focus. I don't believe the pastor or whoever should come to the pulpit to minister and just taking it lightly. I don't think that the song leader should come and take it lightly. I don't think the dancer should come and take it lightly. I don't think the usher should come and take it lightly. We must be able to recognize that every time we walk in, every time we step into the service of the Lord, we are entering into warfare. Amen. Amen. You see, when, when, when God established the when God established the tabernacle in the wilderness, what a place to establish the tabernacle in the wilderness. He established the tabernacle. It doesn't matter what is going on. It doesn't matter how dark things is. The will, the purpose, and the voice of God will be established and it will function. Amen. So when God was about to, when he established the tabernacle in the wilderness, he <laughs> set an order. That's right. And then he set an order. And he, he took out of all the tribes, he took out the tribe of Levi. And he says, you will be my priests. And because he called it his priest, he dressed them differently. Come on. He Come dressed on. them differently. The first thing he did with his priest was to give them an image above everything else. Come on. He dressed them differently. So that wherever they go, they will be seen, they will be known, they will be heard. Even when they were not operating in their priestly activity at that point in time, they, 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 they take off the garments and they went out. They, something went with them because they were not supposed to work otherwise. So there was a little noting upon them. That was the, the priest of God. But he dressed them in a way that signified that, that his anointing was upon them. And he never brought anyone into the priesthood, amen, into the active priesthood before the age of 30. Today the world recognizes that the age of 30 is the, is the age of youth. When you come to the age of 30, you have stepped out of being a youth and you're now stepping into adulthood. Adulthood. Full, complete adulthood. So you're 28 years old, I think, I think you're not a man or woman. Go along, you say, well, I'm going to two years old. <laughs> This is God's word, isn't it? Amen. There's an anointing. There's an anointing in the compliance and the order of God's word. In the natural, we, we, we are not able to see it. In the natural, we do not understand it. In the natural, we don't see the need for it. But there's an anointing. We follow God's order. Amen. We will have blessings in order. The number of these three is what we call the pride of life. Because we understand that the pride of life. See, the scripture says the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And we've given the pride of life another caption to make it fall with the others. The pride of the life is actually the lust of the heart. Okay? It's the lust of the heart. The heart represents the soul, the spirit of man. The heart represents every spiritual um, entity of man. That's what the heart represents. When we talk about the heart in the Bible, we are not talking about the physical heart that pumps blood through the body. Okay, we're talking about the soul. The, you know, heart means center. Heart, heart, heart means um, that, that place where everything functions from. So when we talk about the heart of man, we talk about the center. Now the center would obviously be the spiritual, the, the spiritual makeup of man. And we know the spiritual makeup of man is the deposit of God. When God made when God made Adam in, 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 in the book of Genesis, he says he fashioned Adam out of the dirt. And when he fashioned Adam, Adam was there day long. And Adam could do nothing. He didn't even have a fall of his own. It is only when God breathed, breathing. In, 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 in the word of God, that word breath, pneuma, it, 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 it means spirit, life, animation, activity. And, and, and God 
breathe into, into man. And, and the word of God says that man became a, a living soul. Man had nothing to do or say until the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Huh? We can do nothing. We can do nothing. Jesus took that up and he said to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, listen to me. I do nothing. I say nothing. Unless I have first what? Heard and seen it of my father. Okay? I do or say nothing until I've experienced it from my father. And we need to understand that that's how we as men operate. All human beings, all we operate like that. But Jesus made it very clear also. He came and warned them against the spirit of the Pharisees. And he said to them, he says, you are of your father, the devil. He says, no, 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 Abraham is our father. He says, no, you're of your father, the devil. He says, because if you were of Abraham, you would know me. That's in the Gospel of John. He says, if you were of Abraham, you would know me. But you are not of Abraham, you're of your father, the devil. So, see, they had a different father that they didn't understand. So, it goes back. The reflection is here, though, that we understand that we have, that there are two fathers operating in the life of man. That second father entered in when the fruit was was eaten. That forbidden fruit, that forbidden activity, that forbidden spiritual condition. When it, when it was broken, that second father made himself manifest and took over. All right. So the, the pride of life or the lust of the heart, the lust of the heart. The heart is a spiritual center. Whichever spirit is in control, whichever spirit you're feeding from is the activity that you're going to produce. So we see that the, the pride of life, the lust of the heart, governs both the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Because whatever is in your heart, whatever, your heart is the control center. Um, we all heard the say mind over matter, right? Mind over matter. That's the heart. Mind. The heart is the mind. The matter is your body. Okay, your life is part of your body. That's okay, right. the flesh is part of your body. And your mind, your spirit, um, nothing nothing physical can do anything without spiritual power, without spiritual uh, uh, originality. Nothing physical. I mean, because we understand that. See, this is how the Word of God, the book of Hebrews, tell you that God laid the world from nothing. That's right. He called them out of nothing. Call it out of nothing. Okay? Call the word out of nothing. Isn't that great? Awesome. And then so we, 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 un we understand that. So, this morning I want to, we, we spent some time last week looking at the pride of life and we understand that the pride of life, you know, is something that operates at all times and it runs throughout generations. It runs throughout um, cultures. It, it, it runs in nations. It, Every place you go have a certain activity, physical activity about it. That is all captain to their physical beauty, their physical riches, all, all those things, okay? You know, they say that Barbados, you say that Barbados, uh, Barbados resources its people. Okay, other, other nations boast of how, many, how much gold they have or how much natural resources they have or all those types of things. Barbados doesn't seem to have anything that the boast of. And so it's the boast of the people. Alright, but all these are areas where pride is established. Okay? The gold, the silver, mm -hmm. the beauty. And, and we see in the whole world of tourism, <laughs> the whole world of tourism, that nations are competing with each other to sell, right. to, to, to sell a, a, a blessing from God. You know, Barbados is. Barbados, the Caribbean, um, Mauritius, uh, Seychelles, all of this, they try to sell their natural beauty to attract people. All right? That's pride. That's, that's where pride comes in. Okay, we have we have this and we, and, and, and they're, they're not selling it as on to God. They make it, they're selling it from a different point of view. All right? Because we get it. This is now where countries are competing with each other. As though they made themselves who they are. One word. I won't have anybody to um, submit that word for me. The rest of the eyes. What, 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 what's that um, attitude, emotion, whatever? One word. Someone say, huh? Breathe, breathe. Breathe, exactly. Breathe. 
It is free. Because of the license that it is free. You know, you know, many times we, we live, we've never ever seen or known about something, right? And we live quite happily. And the moment we come into the knowledge of this thing, whatever it is, suddenly our lives are no longer any use. In order for us to have a better life, we must have that thing. Which means up until the moment that you didn't have that thing, that you were satisfied with your life. It's called greed. That's what greed is. Greed is the spirit. Greed is the spirit that tells you your yesterday is nothing compared to today. Okay, in the natural world. Greed tells you that yesterday, in it, you lived in lack. That's what greed tells you. Because now that you've got to realize that this and this and this is available and you can have them and it can make you this and it can make you that and it can make you the third and it can make you the fourth. Now you can start to live what you were doing before was existing. Here, a vision or a sight, well we talked about the loss of the eyes, a vision of the, or a sight says it creates a desire. The moment you see something, some type of desire is created, whether it be a, a, a good desire or a bad desire. So sight creates a desire. Hmm? That desire now, you have to make sure that that desire is not governed by greed. I want to, there's a scripture that came across a long time ago in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 that has quite a lot of, um, quite a different set of interpretations that depending on how people are, uh, how people are like. And if that is for you while you are in Egypt, Jesus. When you come out of Egypt, you leave those people. Those are Egyptian strongholds. Those are Egyptian um, businesses. That's not God's business. Okay. Come on. It's not God's business. That, those, are, that, those are for the Egyptians. When you come out and you come into the promised land, amen, you don't need that. You don't need that. For the word of God tells us that the eyes of man are never full. The eyes of man are never The more you see, the more you want. And there is a place in the kingdom of God is a place in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where you need to understand the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And where we need to understand the word of God. And where we need to make a decision. Now I'll tell you this. I keep saying this in here over and over. If when I was younger, I had the teaching that the Lord delivered in this house. You'll be getting that. You'll, you'll be getting better teaching all you know. But then, be a fast where you are now. But when I say that, I say this also. Whatever you hear, God is going to hold your the door. So don't come and sit in this house and hear and say the good word. Don't set yourself in order. No. You come to church. Church. Okay, we come to come today. And um, the word of God is in the book of Job. Alright? And when the sons of God came to, came to God, uh, who, who was in the midst? Devil. Devil, devil was in the midst. Satan came with the sons of God. There's one thing that is happening here right now. There's one thing that's happening on the earth all the time. Huh? You don't think that that's happening all the time? That Satan comes and, 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 and when it says Satan, it doesn't mean Satan, the individual, it means the whole force of the devilish realm. Okay? Because Satan can only be one place at a time. He's not like the Holy Spirit, but he has all his imps and whatnot that he sends to dispatches them. And, 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 and so when the sons of God come to God, Satan was among them. What do you think the sons of God came to God to do? To worship. And what do you think Satan came to do? To distract. The worship. You see, because Satan knows that people coming to God and they worship God and there's no distraction. But when they 
come back over to the presence of the Lord, amen, that they're coming back over to the anointing, amen, that, that, been, that it will just destroy him. So he cannot allow them to have that purity. So he comes in to distract them. How does it distract them? A slumbering spirit. A wandering mind. Yes. A wrestful yes. and chooser. All of that is happening. That is, it, it is not of God, it's of the word. It's, it's a Satan strategy. And some of us, we come to church month after month, year after year, and still find ourselves sleeping at church. And we don't take, we don't understand that we can take authority over that thing. Come on. This morning, a, a service going on, you know, I, I hear, and I might mind racing all over the place. Not on living or food or anything, but looking at this sanctuary, some things that they doing and what they do and whatnot. I said, yeah, Lord, it's sanctuary and everything, and that sounds good, but uh, this season is a time to worship you, and I, I review that in the name of Jesus. I ask the Lord to forgive you. We've got to be able to do these things. Stop thinking, oh, that's okay, it's not, not all right. When the sons of God are gathered, the word of God says there are two and three are gathered when they fought. I'm in the midst. I'm in the midst. When we are gathered, when we come together, every distraction that presents itself, we need to rebuke it. We need to rebuke it. Amen. Don't give in to it. Don't give in to it. Um, the word has this thing of saying this here. You know, you know, schizophrenia and those things, right? Great. The word says that um, a lot of people suffer from chemical imbalances in their minds, so they manifest like this and manifest like that. Now that may be true, but what is even more true is still is still this. I am the Lord that He did. Right. He didn't He didn't say He healed us for certain things or in certain manifestations. It's a blanket statement. That's I right. am the Lord that healeth you. Anytime there is anything that is wrong with you, he will heal you. That's right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what name the, the, the word put on it. Yep. It doesn't matter how detailed the, the diagnosis of it is. Amen. It doesn't matter how large and heavy a train the prognosis of dealing with it would be. God says I can heal you. Amen. And not 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 I can heal you. You are already. By his stripes, you were healed. If you were healed, I mean, God, listen, hear the word of God. If, if, you see, the word of God says, By your stripes, you were healed, and then come back and says, By your stripes, you are healed. Right? But here, here's how it got from word to earth. Uh, Alright? By your stripes, you were healed. And then in the book of Hebrews, the, the word of God comes says that Jesus was a sac- perfect sacrifice once and for all. Are you going for it? Once. And for all. So that word says that what was still yes. is. Come on. Yeah. Come on. What was still is because he did it once. Didn't have to go back and do it again. It was perfect. It met with every one of God's requirements. It met that heart of God. And it still stands today. So we understand. By his strength, I will see you. So therefore, he said, by his strength, I am. Amen. Because the word was a perfect word. The word was a perfect word. I am healed from loss. Amen. Amen. The book of James tells us this. You know, we, we, we all deal with sin, sin, sin. But the book of James tells us, don't, don't. You, you worry about sin. Sin. You worry about sin, you already have been in. Too late to worry. Okay. It is lust. That's right. Lust is the first thing. All right. He says a man is drawn away, and he tells God of his own lust. And lust, when it is conceived, brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Yeah. And everybody, everybody is worried about sin. The Lord, give me my sin. And the Lord says, I have to give you for your sin, but you are dealing with the root. It's lust. The root is lust. Amen. The root is lust. Get past your activity and deal with your intent. That's right. See, once that intent is changed, the activity can't come forth. So, so do do we understand why for most something for a long time in our lives, we were not making progress before? 
thought you're not going. The order is out of order. It's out of order. It's out of order. Huh? It, 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 is, it is like, it is like, everyone says, BK, and everything, we're going to put a bucket there and say, before this week stops. <laughs> put a bucket there. Okay, see, that bucket gets up and try a different bucket. Perhaps I might, perhaps I might put a, 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 a wee bar in the beat as BK was talking. No, no, no. It is not what you put down there, you do it up here. Okay. Go on, Fido. Why? Where is BK from? And the beat. Deep in the loss, and the same will go. If sin goes, death is dead. Amen. Yeah.